Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to DCM Sri Ram Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Rangnikar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Rangnikar. Thank you, Jacob. Good, af good afternoon and welcome to DCM Shriram Limited's Quarter 2 FI24 Earnings Conference Call. Today we have with us Mr. Ajay Shriram, Chairman and Senior Managing Director. Mr. Ajay Shriram, Joint Managing Director. Mr. Aditya Shriram, Managing Director. And Mr. Sanyog Jain. Deputy CF of the company. We shall commence with remarks from Mr. Ajay Sriram and Mr. Ajit Sriram. Members of the audience will get an opportunity to post their queries to the management following these comments during the interactive question and answer session. Before we begin, please note that some of the statements made on today's call could be forward looking in nature. And a note to that effect has been included in the conference call invitation that has been circulated earlier and is available on the Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Mr. Ajay Sriram to give us a brief overview. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Siddha. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for taking time to join us for our Q2 Financial Year 24 earnings conference call. I wish to take this opportunity to convey our festive greetings to each one of you ahead of Diwali. I will commence with the strategic imperatives of our business, followed by Aji giving a perspective on our business's performance. The fresh conflict in the Middle East threatens to roll back the already weak economic recovery in key developed economies. Inflation remains the primary disruptor to normalization of growth as central bankers are already setting the tone for a tighter policy regime. The combined impact from geopolitics, higher interest rates, and non-linear risks from climate change will intensify problems for nations with bloated debt and weak economies. We are already seeing adverse impact in our further denied businesses from these factors. The steps we are taking to diversify our product mix and bring in higher efficiencies shall mitigate these issues to a certain extent. Sugar industry continues to operate in a stable political environment and is likely to remain insulated from the global dynamics given the fall in production estimates. Shirab Farm Solutions, a business vertical in rural agri-input area, has continued launching new products, including from our own research, and has also started working towards creating a manufacturing footprint. Connector business continued its growth momentum, and we augmented our extrusion capacity to support growth in the UPVC segment and are also looking at expanding geographically and increasing our product offerings. Sustainability being central to our initiatives, one will see progress in water and energy conservation, green energy, and circular economy. We have also raised a sustainability linked loan to mark our unwavering dedication towards the ESG objectives. I would now like to walk you through our various visits. First is chemicals. The major economies are yet to see the path to sustain economic revival due to geopolitical factors. Cosmic soda being a key product that gets consumed by several key segments of the economy, its demand has remained subdued in the first half of the fiscal year, driving inventory levels higher. In India, new capacity addition has led to lower operating rates as the demand pickup is not commensurate to capacity addition. Also, during the first half of the year, the net export was lower at 1.16 lakh metric tons versus almost 1.4 lakh metric tons correspondingly last year. We continue to face price pressures due to international prices and continue to work on the cost side to improve margins. Our captive green energy plant was commissioned in the last quarter, and the 120 megawatt more efficient power plant has started trial runs and will yield results 
from this month. Other projects are under advanced stages of execution and will be commissioned before the end of this financial year. Vinay, South Asia continues to attract imports as demand from North America and China remains subdued. Demand across India was strong, however China, with its excess capacity and aggressive pricing, continued to put pressure on prices in the country. The volumes have been higher this year. Also, the raw material, mainly power and carbon costs, have corrected and have kept margins positive. PV prices have further softened and we are maximizing carbide sales. Sugar. World sugar balance is expected to be balanced and hence international prices remain firm, presently at approximately $730 per ton for whites and 27 cents per pound for raw sugar. Domestic market being insulated from international market, sugar prices continue to be much lower at approximately between 3,800 to 4,000 rupees levels. Indian sugar stocks as of September 30th, 2023 at 4.5 million metric tons along with sugar production for the sugar season 23-24 estimated to be around 30 million, ton, million metric tons should support domestic sugar prices in the coming months. The Uttar Pradesh government is yet to announce the state administrative price, SAP, of sugarcane for the upcoming season. The industry will be expecting a parity with the central government FRP, the fair remuneration price, also factoring in the impact of the country labor policy of Uttar Pradesh. We plan to commence sugarcane crushing in the first week of November and are expecting a good crop for the year. Our distillery operations were slightly impacted due to non-availability of molasses for the few days in the current season due to the irrational country liquor policy. However, this will be mitigated to a large extent in the upcoming season with change in the feedstock mix. The government has achieved ethanol blending of 11.7% as of August 2023 and has also increased the prices of damaged grain ethanol to ensure higher blending in the balanced ethanol year. The prices of feedstock that is sugar and damaged grain, continue to be high and therefore industry is expecting an increase in the ethanol prices for all categories of ethanol to ensure higher blending rates in the coming season. Moving on to agri-rural businesses which comprise of Shiram Farm Solutions, Bioseed and Fertilizers. Shiram Farm Solutions first. We have seen healthy growth on the back of research wheat and hybrid seed volume. In our drive to introduce more research-backed products, we introduced three new products, including a novel product in speciality, speciality plant nutrition. We are also working towards enhancing our brand-centric promotion. The winter rain is expected to be low, and thus we are expecting Ravi to be weaker for crop care and speciality plant nutrition verticals. Our project to manufacture water-soluble fertilizers and biologicals continues on track and will be commissioned in Q4 financial year 24. Bioseed witnessed higher revenues in vegetable seeds in India and corn seeds in Philippines. New and superior performing hybrids have been introduced and well received by farmers in corn and cotton in the target markets of India. More launches are lined up for wheat and vegetables in the upcoming rabi season. Based on the strength of these products and strong pipeline, we are optimistic about significantly increasing our market share in the coming season. Fertilizers. The raw material prices have come down sharply, impacting both top line and bottom line of the business. Profits for the quarter were, low, were lower for the above reason. However, the profits for the half year were higher due to maintenance shutdown in the last year. Subsidy outstanding stood at a negative rupees 267 crores as compared to rupees 683 crores last year and rupees 310 crores as on 31st March 2023. Financial building systems. 
we have seen performance trends sustaining with both our project and retail segments, showing healthy improvement in volumes. We have commissioned two new extrusion lines at Kota, and this will help in sustaining this growth momentum. We have also formed a strategic partnership with a UAE-based firm for our facade business. We are looking to grow both by geographic and SKU expansion, backed by a strong brand and business process. We are once again at the cusp of economic volatility on the global arena. The transmission of software demand trends in India, in tandem with firmness in energy costs, is impacting key sectors of the economy. Our strategic investments in enhancing the business mix and efficiency in operations are expected to be fully achieved before the end of the financial year. As a strongly growing country, India remains a sweet spot for high consumption and as a multi-business entity, we shall be prepared to grow smartly. A healthy cash flow and healthy balance sheet will supplement our growth initiative. I would now like to ask Ajit to cover the financial perspectives with you. Ajit, over to you. Thank you. Good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I will now take you through the financial highlights of the Q2 and H1 FY24 results. Net revenues for Q2 FY24 were at 2,708 crores versus 2,740 crores in Q2 FY23, a decline of 1% year on year, adversely impacting, uh, impacted by lower volumes and prices of chlorovenile segment. Sugar, Penesta, and Shina Farm Solutions led the growth for the quarter. PBDIT for Q2 FI24 was at 136 crores uh, versus rupees 302 crores in Q2 FI23, a decline of 55% year on year. Chlorovenile segment revenues declined 20% year on year to, to rupees 656 crores, and PBDIT was down 81% at rupees 47 crores. The chemical segment reported revenues of 509 crores, a decline of 35% year on year. TCU prices were lower by 40% year on year, and volumes of caustic soda sales were down by 2% year on year. Therefore, PBDIT was down 85% at 38 crores. However, the segment continues to see good demand at prices for hydrogen. Margins are currently positive, led by reduction in energy costs. Vinyl saw a decline in revenues by 5% year on year at Rs. 147 crores, largely on account of a decline in prices of PVC and carbide by, 30, uh, by 13% and 27% respectively. However, volumes of PVC and carbide increased by 15% and 7% respectively as there was a power plant breakdown last year. However, PB, PBDIT saw an improvement of, of, of uh, over last year at rupees 9 crores versus negative 10 crores led by low, lower power and carbon costs. Sugar business revenue, net of excise duty was at uh, rupees 970 crores an increase of 57 crores year on year due to higher prices and volumes in both sugar and ethanol businesses. Sugar volumes were up 30% year on year due to higher domestic releases. Volumes of ethanol were at 541 lakh liters versus 256 lakh liters owing to the commissioning of the 120 KLD multi feed distillery. Sugar and ethanol prices were also higher. PBDIT came in higher at rupees 15 crores as against negative 15 crores for the above reason, despite taking a charge of rupees 45 crores in the current year on account of, of the irrational country liquor policy by the state government. Panesta Building Systems revenues increased 18% year on year to rupees 209 crores and PBDIT by 23% to 45 crores largely on account of higher volumes. Order book was up 48% driven by project segment. Sriram Farm Solutions revenues increased by 18% year-on-year 
at rupees 280 crores, supported by volumes of research wheat and hybrid seeds. Prices of hybrid seeds were also higher. PBDIT for the quarter came in at rupees 44 crores as against 36 crores last year on account of better margins in research wheat. Fertilizer volume, uh, revenue was lower by 37% year on year at rupees 368 crores. PBDIT was down by 48% year on year at rupees 28 crores on account of lower volumes by 7%. Also, prices were lower 33% year on year on account of low energy prices, which is a pass through. The biology segment saw a revenue increase of 46% year on year at rupees 128 crores. This was primarily led by domestic, uh, domestic revenue increased by 53% year on year at rupees 91 crores due to higher volumes in vegetable seeds, whereas international revenues increased by 31% year on year at rupees 37 crores due to higher volumes in corn seeds. For the half year ended 30, 30th September 2023, revenues net of excise duty was at uh, rupees 5,488 crores, reporting a marginal decline of 2% year on year. This was uh, mainly on account of lower prices in segments of chemicals, vinyls, and fertilizers. Volumes were higher in vinyl and fertilizer due to breakdown and shutdown in last year which were higher and were higher in sugar, led by higher sugar releases and commissioning of the 120 KLV multi feed distillery. Penesta and SFS continued its growth journey. Accordingly, PBDIT is at rupees 320 crores, a decline of 58% year on year. The company's neg uh, company net debt at negative rupees 203 crores as on September 20, uh, 2023, as against rupees 681 crores as of March 31, 2023, largely on, on account of sugar off-season. Return on capital employed for September 2023 came in lower at 18.5% as compared to 36% for September 22. In conclusion, our overall performance reflects our commitment to sound investment strategies and with a strong balance sheet and, and cash flows. We are well positioned for the future. Our focus on healthy, sustainable growth has paved the way for continued success and prosperity. This brings me to the end of my opening remarks, and I would like to request the moderator to please open the forum for the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ahmed Madha from Unified Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was first on the caustic business. So can you give some comments on how do you see the current global prices and how is the demand supply behaving in the uh, global market as well as the domestic market? And also, uh, we are witnessing that there is some uptick in the prices in the last couple of months. So is it fair to expect that from quarter two to quarter three, there will be some improvement in our realizations? Yes, yeah. yeah, sure. Uh, so, in, in, in terms of the global demand supply situation, uh, we do see that uh, uh, there was a slight uh, increase in prices, as you, had, uh, as you suggested as well. Uh, this was largely due to China not being in the market aggressively in the past few weeks. Uh, but post the Asian Games, uh, we have seen that the supply from China has, uh, has increased again. Uh, so that was a slight uptick in the market and that has corrected. So we do expect that in the coming uh, short term period, next quarter or so, the prices are likely to, to be ranged down. Okay. 
And one more question on the caustic side. We see that the cost has come down from the last quarter. So how, can you quantify how much are the savings from the renewable power plant and how much are the savings from the declining coal prices? So uh, as far as the uh, renewable power is concerned, so the, because of that, uh, there is going to be a saving of around on the renewable cost of around 10 percent, and uh, we will not be able to quantify in terms of uh, how much is from the renewable and how much is from the other sources. But that is the ballpark number. Okay, fine. And on the sugar business. Are there any one-offs in the sugar business this quarter? I'm trying to understand. I know that uh, this is the weakest quarter uh, seasonally, but we have very significant growth in volumes both for sugar and ethanol. Uh, uh, so is it just related to the uh, inventory cost which we were carrying uh, from last quarter or are there any one-offs? Yes, uh, our inventory uh, is valued at around 3,200 per quintal. Uh, so we are carrying an inventory of 12.9 lakh quintals as of now. Okay. I hope I have answered your question. I just wanted to understand uh, there was loss in this quarter and the volumes were really good. So is it just a factor of the inventory cost or is there any other reason why there was loss? No, I have mentioned no, in the opening remarks. Uh, we have taken a hit of 45 crores. We have taken a hit of 45 crores because of the change in the country ticker policy. So that has been a, 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 a massive hit in the bottom line in the in the current quarter, which we have taken on our P&L and balance sheet. Okay, fine. Got it. That, that's what so I know. The revaluation of collateral from uh, because we manufacture we manufactured through the B heavy route. And the state government equated B heavy and C heavy at the same level, which is uh, not rational, really. Okay, fine. So, is, is, was this like a one off or is it recurring? No, so it's because of the policy. Uh, it's because of the policy where the, the alcohol output from B heavy is double that of C heavy, but then they equated it at the same level. So it's uh, uh, one off. The new uh, policy has come out yesterday, and we uh, we are evaluating our strategy of what we do do in the current year going forward. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. And just last question on the capex. Uh, how are the uh, uh, how is the update on the capex? So what will be the timeline? Should we expect that it should be commercialized by Q4? All the capex which we have for the caustic chlorine business. Uh, yes, so I think as mentioned earlier on the call as well, uh, we are making good progress uh, with, the, with the CapEx and uh, most of the mechanical completion uh, is, is almost done. The pre-trials and pre-commissioning will begin. So we expect that uh, by Q4 uh, we will be commissioning and completing the CapEx. Okay. And how much balance CapEx will do for uh, second half? So uh, we'll be doing close to around uh, 500 crores mm -hmm. in the second half. Okay, thank you so much. That's from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Parth Vasani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, in the chemical segment, uh, the capex that we would have done like for the epichlorohydrin, for the hydrogen peroxide, and for the caustic soda. So what would be the uh, total amount if you can uh, guide in terms of the capex that we have spent or we are supposed to spend? So uh, total uh, spent uh, would be around 2,500 crores in the uh, chemical segment. And uh, uh, out of that, uh, another 500 crores uh, will be spending um, in the uh, next S2. So, additional 2,500 crores will be spent in the next coming year. That's what we are saying. No, no, 500 crores. So 500 crores. I think just to clarify what you are asking, uh, Pastor, 2,500 crores has already been spent on a 120 megawatt power plant, on aluminum chloride expansion, 
on the ongoing cost of soda expansion, ECS expansion, ECO2 expansion. And we will be spending approximately 500 crores more in the second half of this financial year. Okay, okay. So, and the, uh, okay, got it. And in terms of the epichlorohydrin, uh, when do we uh, uh, expect to get it commissioned? So, yes, we expect it to be commissioned by Q4 this financial year. Okay, okay. Uh, second question, uh, I mean, we are also expanding the uh, caustic soda capacity. And what I understand is chlorine is something uh, which is a bottleneck in terms of because it's sold at a lesser price. So, uh, just wanted to understand, I mean, once we expand the caustic soda, how we will be managing the chlorine considering the negative price generally prevailing in the market? Yeah. So, uh, uh, you're right, chlorine is a key factor in expansion uh, of, of caustic soda as well. Uh, uh, I think we have a uh, couple of factors. One is that uh, we have uh, captive consumption that is also increasing from the past. We are putting up an epichlorohydrin plant, as you know, that will consume uh, chlorine. Uh, we have already commissioned an aluminium chloride plant uh, that, would, that is already consuming uh, some of our chlorine. So that will be captive uh, support for uh, the expansion as well. Uh, and additionally, we have uh, uh, very strong partners uh, in our customers as pipeline uh, customers. So they, they, they have been on the growth journey along with us, uh, and we truly value that partnership. So as they also continue to expand, we are, we are confident that a large percentage of our chlorine uh, will be consumed through the pipeline and captively. So currently, what percentage will be will be consuming, like in current capacity of city, and what will be post expansion, meta meeting number? So uh, currently, it is close to 40% uh, uh, as a combination of captive and uh, pipeline, as you mentioned earlier. And after the commissioning, we expect this to go up to 50%, close to 50%. Okay, this includes both uh, internal consumption and the pipeline cost. Captive consumption yes. and pipeline customers, yes. Thank you, thank you. And all thank, the you. thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ria from Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I have four or two, three questions. Uh, first is, uh, in terms of what are the current caustic realization as such as, as China has started and we're seeing um, internal utilization also improving. So, on that. Caustic realization. So, it is uh, approximately around 26,000. 26,000. So, uh, is it fair to assume that 25,000 in July was kind of a bottom out? So, uh, so as we said, it will be in the range of around 25 to 27,000, uh, and uh, so right now it is at 26,000. You see, I am talking now. Okay. Uh, and my second question is in terms of sugar. Uh, so, what would be a uh, cost of production for last season? So, uh, as we said, uh, it is already been mentioned, uh, the, it is at 3,200. That's inventory, right? Inventory. Right. Inventory valuation. Uh, I'm talking cost of production. That's the direct cost of production. Okay, that's the direct cost of production. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of timeline for the current capex uh, for the distillery, No, we already commissioned the, the distillery, uh, the, the 120 KL multi feed distillery. It's already commissioned. Right. And in terms of the new 2100 DCD, uh, which we have uh, just announced. Oh, that is uh, expansion of one of our sugar plants. And that will be commissioned by the sugar season 24-25. Uh, it will be ready by October 24. October 24th, it will be ready. And uh, what kind of, uh, hello? So yeah. recently in UP, uh, the other peers just said that the FCI for the grain-based 
not getting grains and they've shifted to maize and like. So, what is our strategy there? So, the, uh, our strategy keeps evolving depending on the price of the raw materials available. So, uh, ours, as, as mentioned earlier, ours is a multi feed history. We can we can process rice, wheat, or maize. So, depending on the prevalent uh, spot sizes, we take a call. Okay, and what are the yield and uh, yield ex yield expectation and the cane crushing expand expectation for the next year for us? Uh, in that sense, it's a little bit difficult to say. But uh, uh, this year we'll be uh, utilizing the fully expanded capacity in Azhapur, which was uh, commissioned by few weeks after the season started last year. So we'll be uh, utilizing our entire 41,000 TCD. 41,000 TCD entirely, right? And uh, actually, I was talking in terms of the uh, hello yeah. in area and the crushing. Uh, do we expect it higher than last year? The crushing, yes. apart from the new uh, incremental capacity addition. Yes. Oh. The, the, the crop looks good. So we do we do expect a higher crush compared to last year. Right, right. And in terms of Fenesta, what are the details of the strategic partnership? If you could give in the new announcement of the facility which we have given today, if you could elaborate more on that, what is the kind of revenue potential out of the capex? So we feel that Fenesta we've been making windows and doors for many years now, and we are a leader in that. But we are getting into facade which is the six uh, windows like you have in airports and other multi-story office buildings, etc. So for that, we have uh, tied up with a party in Dubai to get their input and their technology to start put up, put up a manufacturing like plant in India. So that is what we are working on. Right. And what would be the kind of revenue potential and or the capex involved in this? I think it's a little early because we are still discussing with our potential partners of what is the scale, size, scale, scope of this, of this plant. And we will be growing it starting with a size which is more practical and then keep growing it. So we have not yet worked out the details of what is the capex on it. Got it. And uh, in terms of power cost savings, uh, what is it? Could you give your outlook there going forward uh, in the coming quarters by how would the power cost saving? because we have commissioned the new plant as well, and the power prices have also gone down. So what would be the savings in that aspect? Okay. So uh, what we expect is that uh, there will be a saving for in the variable cost approximately of uh, around 10%, because of uh, once uh, this power plant comes in and it becomes critical. OK. For 10% improvement, we can see in terms of yeah, yeah. power. Yeah, it is 1 per unit. That is what we expect. 1 per unit, right. Uh, uh, thank you so much for answering my question. I'll get back to Q for further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sakit Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and thank you for this opportunity. Sir, uh, just dwelling to the, yes, sir. Uh, just dwelling to the last point, sir, what would be the annual savings in the absolute uh, absolute number, if you can share, for the power cost, from power cost? I think it's it. Yeah. Good. 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 It could be uh, close to around uh, what we expected, 100 crores of savings. Uh, and it is the uh, official at the full capacity. Okay. And so there, there are two components to it. First is the the new power plant, and then is the renewable one also. So for the renewable segment, 43 megawatt. What is the plant load factor and uh, average we are we are uh, taking into account where, when we are arriving uh, at this? Uh, the renewable power uh, is 43 megawatt. Uh, actual uh, load will be around uh, 22 megawatt that we will receive, and. Uh, what we price at which we will see is around uh, 4 to 20 pesos per, per unit. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is the um, uh, expectation from the renewable power. 
बट दिस हंड्रेड करोड़ नंबर इज ओनली फ्रॉम द थर्मल पावर प्लांट That's right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And the capex we have done for this. What is the payback from this for this plant? It's around twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Sir, sir. sir uh, as you were mentioning that the ECU currently is in the vicinity of uh, in the band of twenty-six to twenty-seven thousand rupees. So uh, earlier. Uh, earlier also the way i have seen historically that pvc and uh, the clo- this uh, caustic prices have inverse correlation uh, because uh, of of the reasons explained by you earlier also uh, uh, as uh, but what what currently is the uh, the the outlook uh, in terms of the, especially for the caustic prices the capacity built up has been uh, in our country domestically the prior, the, there has been 1 million ton additional capacity that has come up Uh, but globally, what is the uh, how are things shaping up? Uh, if you could give some more color on the same. Sure, sure. So uh, uh, fundamentally, uh, we are seeing that uh, at a global level, uh, the demand is not very, very robust. Uh, of course, in Europe, there are challenges in terms of demand. The the war uh, also has created an uncertain outlook. Uh, the other factor, which is uh, can have implications, is of course uh, China. Uh, and china has been pushing material uh, into the global market uh, aggressively as well uh, so we do expect that in the coming uh, uh, coming quarter a quarter or couple of quarters uh, the prices are likely to be uh, range bound and in india yes uh, as as you uh, indicated there is an increase in uh, in supply uh, so unfortunately uh, there is a demand factor and a supply factor which is why the short term we see uh, you know prices to be range bound Medium to long term, we expect a positive outcome. Sir, when we look at your capital work in progress, uh, it has moved up to now closer to twenty. It is twenty three fifty seven. So for 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 the coming H for H two, uh, what for uh, what percentage? I mean, what amount would get capitalized? And if you could just dwell, uh, which projects are going to get uh, commercialized uh, within this financial year? So uh, we are saying that uh, uh, ECH, H2O2, and uh, the P120, uh, all these projects uh, will and and cost is eight eight fifty TPD. Uh, all these projects will get capitalized uh, in H2. Okay, so that uh, so we have spent the entire amount, man, uh, or uh, no? So we still have to spend around five hundred crores on these projects. Okay, uh, but we were about to commission something for the third quarter. I think the December quarter we will be commissioning. Yeah, P120. Uh, we will be commissioning sometime in November. Come again, sir. I missed your point. P, the P120 plan trials have already started. Okay, they are already running. We are gradually taking it up. So by the end of November, we expect it to run to a reasonable capacity, which will contribute to the power requirement for the plant. Okay. So P120, can you elaborate? I I am not aware. What are you? Uh... We are putting up a new power plant at 120 megawatts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. P120 power plant. Okay. Fine, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, we, we, now we are yeah. starting, and we will then keep increasing capacity gradually in a structured way based on the rules and regulations laid down for reaching full capacity of a power plant. Correct. So when we look at your net debt number, it was uh, when we were cash positive. Uh, so how did we achieve this uh, uh, for the first half? So uh, it is largely uh, because of the liquidation of the sugar stock and also uh, and the treat of the FICC uh, deal. Uh, the subsidy part. Yes, yes, subsidy part. but like i said and that is the reason why you have mentioned in the subsidy segment also that that, that is also carrying a negative balance i was have come coming to that yeah correct it carries a negative balance which will get adjusted again in the future bill okay so for fy24 what should be the debt number uh, closing debt number we should look forward yeah we uh, do early to get that number because it depends on government policy also regarding the fict dues Correct, sir. Now, sir, coming to this, uh, our farm, uh, the bio seed part and the farm production uh, business. 
particularly for the bio seed segment is the if i correctly remember two two quarters back you did mention about some uh, some policy changes and uh, things to be put into space so that this this segment will start contributing so where are we in midst of the bio seed uh, part of the story the restructuring no, part in the opening remarks i mean we, we made good progress in our vegetable seed and and we doing trials on a uh, based upon the r&d and the government provision we doing extensive trials on a couple of other um uh crops which uh we we doing uh, extensive trials on in a couple of other crops and more notches are, are lined up for the wheating vegetable in the upcoming uh, ravi season so man what should be the outlook for this sector in 2 3 years down the line what kind of uh, business profile can will this segment shape up Uh, going ahead, we see a positive outlook. We see a positive outlook because our pipeline is is strong, and uh, I mean it's, it's very difficult to say depending on climatic factors and uh, very strong El Nino uh, prediction for next year. But we we do see a strong outlook. Sir, coming to the sugar distillery part, my uh, second point was uh, I think so the sale of grain uh, by FCI was. Uh, was uh, abruptly stopped what is the status on the sin and uh, our dependence on fci sale no so we are buying from the open market and, and as i mentioned earlier ours is a multi seed uh, distillery so depending on the stock prices of grain broken rice or maize we can uh, we 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 take a call depending on a spot basis and and purchase i mean uh, whichever Raw material is, is uh, more advantageous at that point of time. And and how are the prices being set? The raw material price basket. I mean, since now it is all market uh, from market per uh, sources, you are FCI, expensive. Compared to FCI, it is higher, and uh, we are now waiting for. I mean, we waiting for the revised uh, ethanol prices uh, both at Indian Wells and at the uh, Indian Wells Sugar Cane Juice and at the Indian Wells Sugar going forward from the central government sir the prices were revised higher sir i think so last last quarter itself the september month on for the green year uh, i didn't get you sir uh, is it from the green part on the that green yes yeah they were revised for the green okay. and now now uh, again a uh, 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 new revision is due which will come within the next week or two weeks right sir so. Sir, also in the ethanol part, I think with the liquor, country liquor part, we mentioned in your presentation that for there was a 45 crore uh, some uh, loss we need to we we had booked because of some government policies. Can you tell more of what was uh, uh, this all about? And uh, this is for this 45 is for the first half. As I mentioned earlier in uh, answering a question, uh, the the state government has equated the quantum of of uh, of country liquor supply or alcohol supply for b heavy and c heavy however the output from b heavy is double that of c heavy so if you make a uh, if you make an x reservation for for c heavy based on c heavy you are supposed to make a 50% reservation based on b heavy so so equating both b heavy and c heavy is not correct So we have made our presentation that this will be revised, uh, or it, it is done in dust. Right? As I mentioned earlier, the the uh, new new policy for reservation has come out only yesterday. We are studying it, and depending on uh, what is most desirable for our company, we will uh, take that method for forward in the coming season, which starts this week. Okay, so can you come again? Which policy, sir? I missed your point. The I mean the uh, I mean reservation policy of, of molasses for country liquor. Okay, for this sugar season, for the current sugar season. For sugar season, for twenty three twenty four. Twenty three twenty four. Correct. yeah uh, th- thank you sir i think so the only uh, the only growth part in our total segment is correctly for the semester and as you were uh, earlier uh, mentioning also sir 
to taking into account the 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 pilot that you are getting and also now we uh, also improving our product profile so say three years down the line what kind of business are we looking up to uh, to set up from the the financial vertical itself if you could get throw some more more light uh, on the same sir and the key competitors in the segment so i'll just correct you the growth path is happening in all our businesses except for the manufacturing business correct yeah growing in all our businesses and talking to the fishery very difficult to give a clear picture when you're still moving at a growth path one can't give any figures like this correct sir yes yeah, sir so thank you for all the uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you for the presentation, sir. Uh, it's very vivid and very elaborate, and we hope Thank for you. the continuity, sir, and happy to be to the entire team, sir. Thank May, you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And all the best, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Narendra from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Sorry if the question is repeated, but I wanted wanted to know uh, your outlook on the sugar prices given there are reports of uh, you know lower harvest. I, I'm I'm sorry, we didn't hear. Could you kindly say that again, please? Yeah, yeah. I I said I'm sorry uh, if the question is being repeated, but uh, I wanted to know uh, you know uh, sugar domestic sugar prices uh, given there are reports of. uh lower harvest this season sugar prices yeah yeah domestic sugar prices yeah right yeah. so the domestic sugar prices as i was mentioning in the opening remark is between 38 and 40 rupees and uh sugar being a controlled commodity the government releases on a monthly basis so i don't see the sugar prices coming up any further going forward okay Okay, got it. And uh, uh, could you please uh, 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 mention the uh, you know uh, the your uh, ethanol capacity once? Capacity. I have not that data. So if you are our ethanol capacity is roughly eighteen crore liters per year. Okay, eighteen crore liters. And in the uh, TP, uh, uh, KLPV terms. Uh, that depends upon actually your I mean uh, the raw material mix being used, be it C heavy or B heavy or cane juice. So uh, it will it will uh, depend upon the mix of your raw material. Okay, okay, got it. And the second question regarding uh, caustic uh, demand and pricing situation. So uh, do we see it improving in uh, you know say near or uh, near or medium? Uh, term, you know, next uh, next year or so. You know, I'm sorry, we can't understand what you're saying. Could you kindly yeah. uh, speak a little slower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. we can't yeah. understand what you're asking. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about. The, and you repeat the question, please. Yeah, am I clear now? Yes, much better. Yeah, yeah. So I was talking about the caustic environment, caustic soda environment. You know, the demand and price point. So, do we see it improving in the near term? You know, say next couple of quarters. Uh, so, as as we uh, shared earlier, also on the call, uh, the near term outlook, uh, we expect the pricing to be range bound. Uh, but in the medium to long term, we do see uh, positive uh, positive uh, upside. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Yes. Please, please go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, am I audible? Could you repeat it? That I, I missed it. Sorry, please. So, uh, as we said earlier, in the near term, uh, given the demand supply scenario, we expect the prices to be at at their current levels. Uh, but going forward, in the medium and long term, uh, we are bullish on on uh, on where the prices will go. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, happy festivities. All the best. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pratik Tholia from Systematic. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi sir. Thanks for the opportunity. So, what is the price is currently? So, uh, it is uh, around uh, twenty-six thousand. Chlorine. Chlorine is a negative five thousand. Chlorine is negative five thousand, and this is the same number for uh, Q2. Pardon? Q2. For the second quarter, is uh, this is five thousand. This is currently in the month of October. Three thousand between three thousand three thousand five hundred. Okay. And so this thirty-six thousand that is uh, sorry twenty-six thousand. Uh, that you said was ECU and not caustic, correct? Just wanted clarification on that. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. And the second thing is sugar business. Uh, are, is there any red route sort of incident happening in our uh, chain area also? Because some of the companies in the call have been mentioning about red route infestation in some parts of UP, especially in the low lying region. So, uh, are we also uh, seeing anything that on that front? Yes, there has been red route in our area as well. However, our, our team team is taking very proactive steps and uh, mitigating the I mean, red rot. And also, we are we we I mean progressively changing the variety of two three eight to other varieties, uh, which are less red rot. Uh, uh, so, so what is the uh, mix uh, right now then uh, uh, with respect to our cane variety? How much of uh, uh, our cane variety has now shifted out of uh, outside of two uh, three eight? It will be difficult to uh, give that estimate as of now. Okay, okay, sure. And so we are also hearing about cane uh, uh, SAP going up. Uh, has there been any formal announcement on that front? And uh, what sort of number are we expecting? No, there's there's been no announcement so far. Understood. And uh, remember the, the uh, FRP by the central government was raised by ten rupees a quintal uh, three months ago. Right, right. So, is it going to be in line with that or higher than that? What is your say? There's been no announcement so far. Okay. And so lastly, I think you know, uh, Penesta has really done well. Uh, we are now clocking almost uh, 200 crores of quarterly top line with an 18% EBIT margin. So I'm guessing our EBITDA margin will be 20% flat. So, so what is the roadmap over here? Uh, is this sort of a revenue run rate, quarterly revenue run rate now sustainable? And also on the margin front, you think this 18 20% sort of margin is now sustainable? So what is really changed in this business and how does how do you look at this you know, going forward over the next two, three years? I think I'll put it this way that as we discussed, we expect growth of 15 to 20 percent in the Seneca business going forward by moving into new geographies, introducing new products. As I mentioned earlier, we're looking at Sasar, that's a new business we're getting into. This is an ongoing business. We put up two more exclusion plants at a quota factory, which gives us a larger number of profiles available. And we are seeing that the real estate market in India, in India is growing. And the aspirations of people is growing. They want a better product, better quality, which gives better insulation, less dust, less noise, less heat. And this is a product like ours has a positive impact. So we are positive on this business. Understood. Understood. That's very helpful. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you so much, and wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the participation in today's call. Our strategic investments in diversifying our product mix and enhancing operational efficiency are on track to yield results by the end of this financial year. With India continuing to grow, we are well prepared to grow intelligently across our diverse business portfolio. Thanks to our healthy balance sheet, we are well equipped 
to fuel our growth initiatives and drive positive change in the market future. And thank you all for being a part of our journey. We thank you for taking our time during the onset of the festival season. And we take this opportunity to wish you, along with your families, a very safe and happy Diwali and a healthy and prosperous year ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of DCM Sridham Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.